Hi, it's Dwyer. GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk boxing, let's talk boxing politics, let's talk boxing promoters. Right? Now, news is broken that apparently a serious effort was made to put together a fight between James DeGale and George Groves. Right? The argument is that the sanctioning body was willing to give Anthony Durrell, the champion, who Groves is the mandatory for, extra time in which to fight his mandatory. In other words, sometimes champions get opportunities to fight voluntaries or, depending on how they fought in the past, right, a lot of fights in a short period of time, to take extra time to defend their titles, right? Now, there's something in boxing called step-aside money. Sometimes these champs are actually given an extra incentive not to insist on calling out the mandatory contender. So the feeling was that Anthony Durrell would have cooperated in the making of a fight between James DeGale and George Groves, a fight that certainly would have sold out the arena. Right? Now, there's some extra bad blood in the background. Right? George Groves beat James DeGale in the amateurs. James DeGale was the person who went on to win the Olympic gold medal. Right? George Groves and DeGale have a long history. The two guys were really at each other's throats before their first fight, a fight that Groves won, right? Also, Groves is not on the best of terms with DeGale's promoter, right? Just understand that behind the scenes, as is often the case in life, there are men behaving badly, right? There are guys with disagreements, so, now we're hearing that George Groves is willing to take much shorter money to fight Anthony Durrell, as opposed to fighting James DeGale, right? DeGale, of course, has his own fight against Andre Durrell, very tough matchup, for the belt that Carl Frotch has vacated. Trust me, you need to take out a piece of paper and write this down, right? <laughs> you need to keep your own scorecard because the parts are moving that quickly. Just know that it seems unlikely that DeGale will fight Groves in their next fight. Just understand, too, that these fighters are young men in their 20s who really haven't tasted their own mortality like older men have. Right? I personally feel Anthony Durrell beats George Groves. Understand, if Anthony Durrell beats George Groves, then you could forget about a fight against James DeGale anytime soon if James DeGale beats Andre Durrell. Right? Understand, promoters love fights that already sell themselves. Right? I'm sure the promoter, even with the possibility of titles hanging in the balance, I'm sure the promoter would rather promote a fight that's going to make everyone a lot of money. Understand that the winner of DeGale George Groves necessarily would be in line for a title fight, whether it's for ranking reasons or for financial reasons, because their profile would be raised that much in the eyes of the public. And, of course, the public would then start saying, when are you going to give this guy a shot. This is professional prize fighting. Many fans believe that the end goal is to get titles. I'm just telling you for many in the sport, the end goal is to get paid. Right? This is a lot of people's vocation. And if you can get paid and still maintain your status as mandatory contender, or if you could be, be the guy to become the next mandatory contender because you've just beaten the current mandatory contender, then, you know, that's something that needs to be looked at. Just understand, though, that George Groves is not going to fight James DeGale in his next fight. He's fighting Anthony Durrell. I believe George Groves is going to lose that match. Let's shift gears. Kind of a similar dynamic here. 
A few years ago here online, I made the point that then unbeaten David Price should fight a Klitschko brother. I believe both Klitschkos were still in the sport. I think Vitaly Klitschko has moved on to uh, his post-boxing career, and Vladimir Klitschko, still in the sport, still has a title. The argument I made was whether or not David Price was ready. He had to take the fight against Vladimir Klitschko. My argument was simply that you aren't in a position to fight for the title that often in your career. Also, if you have a punch, and David Price has a punch, you're literally one good punch away from winning the heavyweight title. Also, if you're in against a champ, even if you lose, if you look good against a champ, that's going to significantly raise your profile in the sport. That's going to significantly raise your box office potential. Right? Fans will say, oh, isn't this the guy who gave Vladimir Klitschko a tough fight? Right? You know, uh, sanctioning bodies will know who you are more. Right? Just in terms of career development, it's a great step in the right direction. Right? So my advice to fighters is when you have a shot to fight the heavyweight champion, you need to take that shot. David Price is a prime example of why that's so. Because David Price then got exposed by Tony Thompson. Right? Keep in mind, Thompson himself has fought Vladimir Klitschko in the past. Right? When David Price stepped up against world-class competition, even though he was heavily favored, right? David Price got exposed. You actually noticed David Price couldn't do a lot of things in the ring. Keep in mind, too, it was a bit curious that he would pick Thompson because Thompson, of course, is a southpaw, right jab, can fight you along, and has power. In other words, Thompson's a problem matchup. Price wasn't ready. He lost twice to Tony Thompson. Now Price isn't in the area code of fighting Vladimir Klitschko. Right? He had a window of opportunity didn't take it and now of course he's at the back of the line in the heavyweight division let me point out too that when you're a young guy like David Price and there's a lot of buzz about you and you're an unbeaten fighter right sometimes even if you're not the guy who's gonna fight the champ next sometimes your best bet is to stay outside of the ring right cultivate a lot of mystery and intrigue about you. Have fans firmly believe you're the future. So then you don't jeopardize losing and you get the shot at the title, right? Your people should be there calling out the champ saying, when are you going to give me a shot, right? Let me point out too that boxing today is different than it used to be. Back in the day, you actually had guys you know, giving exhibitions and stuff like that. Not even official matches, but giving exhibitions to keep their name in the paper without jeopardizing their records, right? When a young guy like a David Price doesn't take advantage of the hype when he's unbeaten and when he makes a dangerous decision to fight very dangerous veterans as opposed to waiting to fight the champ, in my opinion, he's making a mistake. Now, the reason all of this is relevant is I made a video where I said, you know, if I'm Deontay Wilder, I wouldn't fight Vladimir Klitschko right away. And a YouTube viewer, and keep in mind, <laughs> this isn't the mainstream press where Brian Williams can go for years without being challenged by his audience on his facts. Here on YouTube, all of us make a video, and then immediately, everyone who makes a video people are able to call them out online and say, didn't you say this? Aren't you being inconsistent? So I made a video where I said, hey, Deontay Wilder, who is raw just like David Price was. Don't look at the results. Look at the guy's game in the ring. Right? Deontay Wilder is raw just like David Price. And I said, whoa, if I'm Deontay Wilder, 
I don't fight a much more advanced fighter like Vladimir Klitschko, a much more experienced fighter like Vladimir Klitschko, right? Keep in mind, Klitschko was in the Olympics in the 1990s. I don't fight him soon, right? I'd have to develop my game a bit before I hop in the ring with Vladimir Klitschko. So a viewer here online said, whoa, 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 Rich, how can you say that? about Deontay Wilder when you were trying to say that David Price should fight Vladimir Klitschko. Understand, there's a big difference between Deontay Wilder and David Price. Right? David Price was a guy looking to get a title. Deontay Wilder somehow, <laughs> right, with Vladimir Klitschko being dominant for years, Deontay Wilder somehow already has a share of the heavyweight belt. Right? Understand, Deontay Wilder can advertise himself as a current heavyweight champion. If you already have the belt, if you've already reached the top of the mountain, then in my opinion, you need to spend time learning skills before you hop in the deep end of the pool against a more established champion. Right? Since Deontay Wilder already has a share of the belt, Right, since he already can advertise his fights as heavyweight title fights, since he has a group of contenders, challengers, who want to fight him, if I were him, since, in my opinion, his left hand's underdeveloped, in my opinion, he doesn't have an inside game, right? In my opinion, he's lucky he fought a slow-footed Bermain Stavern, who, now we're finding out, was dehydrated and not in his best shape for the fight, right? Since Deontay Wilder, in my opinion, and this is the net, let's be blunt, is not on the same level right now as Vladimir Klitschko. I don't think he should fight Vladimir Klitschko right now. If I'm him, I literally work on my game. I spend time in the gym. I have fights in the gym, right? Customato used to have these gym fights where he would have his fighters show up just like they would in a regular fight. He would have a timekeeper. They would go 12 rounds, three minute rounds. He would pay some very experienced contender to come in and test his fighter. And then they would have fights outside of the public eye. This way, if Cus's guy lost, no one would know about it, right? The guy could then work on his game. That's what Deontay Wilder needs to do with Mark Breland and his team, isn't it? The point I made, too, is Deontay Wilder is lucky because some of the members of his management group, believe it or not, are also members of Klitschko's management group, right? So it's not even that these guys are in constant contact with each other. No, they're the same guy. And so if these guys care about Wilder's career, and keep in mind, Klitschko's much older than Wilder, so there's no reason why they wouldn't, right? The idea would be, we don't need to rush Wilder. We already have a older heavyweight champ. Let's have this play out so Klitschko has a reign, and then when the time is right, the torch can be passed, or there can be a big fight when Wilder's more prepared. Right, so my advice to Deontay Wilder is I'd stay away from Vladimir Klitschko right now. Right, I know that sounds contradictory, but let's just say if Wilder didn't have a title and if he had one shot on getting Vladimir Klitschko, given that I think Wilder's going to get beaten up by somebody with more talent, right? Tyson Fury. I'll take Fury over Wilder. I wouldn't even spend two minutes analyzing that fight. Right? All I'm saying is, if Wilder didn't have a title, I would say, Wilder, go for whatever heavyweight shot you can get. But since Wilder has a title, in my opinion, he has time. Let's shift gears. Right? Carl Frotch, Bernard Hopkins. You know, I made an earlier video on this where I talked about how Hopkins was ready to accept Carl Frotch's challenge to fight him in Nottingham. Let me say this. That fight would be a promoter's dream. I'm guessing that fight sells out 
in a day or less, right? Understand, that's a big purse fight, right? That's an opportunity for Carl to fight in front of his home crowd. A lot of opponents, right, even opponents who are willing to fight Carl Frotch, they hear Carl's hometown and they're like, oh, whoa, whoa, no, 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 no. I'll fight Carl someplace else. I'm not fighting Carl on his front lawn. Bernard Hopkins is prepared to fight Carl on his front lawn. But let's talk about one of the biggest motivators of boxers, right? And that's legacy. Now understand, this is a Carl Frotch thing. This isn't Frotch's promoter. Because I'm sure Frotch's promoter, out of the corner of his eye, knows that. When Deontay Wilder fought Bermains to Vern in Las Vegas, that fight was not a sellout. Understand, you have a lot of fights in Las Vegas where you look around the arena, they are empty seats, right? Carl Frotch in Las Vegas, that's not as guaranteed a sellout as Carl Frotch in Nottingham, right? I would encourage you to look at the box office for Roy Jones Jr., against Bernard Hopkins, two future Hall of Famers, right, for a fight that took place in Las Vegas. There were more empty seats that night than there were filled seats, right? So understand, the promoter, I'm sure, would have no problem, right? Eddie Hearn would have no problem with the fight in Nottingham. He's thinking, box office, more beer for us. Right? Great marketing, too. You know, that promotion sells itself. Carl Frotch coming back home. But here's why that fight's not really happening. It has nothing to do with Nottingham. It has more to do with Cardiff. Right? It has more to do with Joe Calzaghe, doesn't it? Carl Frotch is a guy who's fighting for legacy. Right, the worst thing to happen to Carl Frotch was he lost his first fight against Mikael Kessler, a guy who, when he was unbeaten, Joe Calzaghe beat. Understand, Carl Frotch's biggest opponent isn't anyone fighting today, it's Joe Calzaghe. Right, Carl Frotch is a guy who wants to walk into a British pub t 10 years from now and have someone place him in the same sentence as Joe Calzaghe. That's who he's really fighting. So Carl Frotch came back. He avenged his loss to Mikael Kessler. Now understand, a fight that has been paying dividends to the Calzaghe legacy ever since it happened was Calzaghe's victory over Bernard Hopkins. Right? Understand, most people understand that Father Time eventually beats us all. So the argument is that Hopkins, from a few years ago, the Hopkins who fought Joe Calzaghe, was younger, probably fresher, than Bernard is today. Now you could imagine the hit to legacy, and it would be irrevocable, because unfortunately, Joe Calzaghe's retired. Right? He signed his autograph to his career. He's now retired. Right? Understand if Carl Frotch fights a guy Joe Calzaghe beat when that guy was younger and fresher. If Carl Frotch fights and loses to Bernard Hopkins. Worse. If he loses to Bernard Hopkins in his home town, in my opinion, that would be the most possible, put it this way, that would be the worst outcome. That's the worst possible outcome for Carl Frotz in his career. He wouldn't be able to come back from that. Right, the idea is he'd be losing to a guy who already lost to Joe Calzaghe. Right, Carl would understand that in the Olympic race of life, Calzaghe would get the gold and Carl would get 
the silver right he wouldn't be on the platform getting gold with Joe Calzaghe now I know a lot of people will say hey come on Carl's looking at millions of dollars to fight Bernard doesn't Bernard deserve this understand we're in the mid to late 30s part of Carl's career right what matters here more than anything else is legacy it's why Juan Manuel Marquez will not fight Manny Pacquiao again even though that fifth fight would be a sellout in a day that fifth fight would put millions of dollars in Marquez's pocket right these fighters with millions in the bank understand that the money they would make from even a mega fight is not worth their legacy if legacy matters to them that much right some guys are mercenaries we've seen guys come out of retirement to fight impossible fights because the money just hit a level that they couldn't turn down I believe that Carl Froch is more like Juan Manuel Marquez I think legacy is a big part of why he's a fighter it's a big part of his motivation so just understand even if a Carl Froch Bernard Hopkins fight makes sense from a financial standpoint even if winning that fight would be great for legacy the risk of losing that fight a fight that Carl Froch at 168 doesn't have to take because Bernard of course was fighting at 175 not 168 Bernard's not Carl's mandatory also keep in mind Carl knows who he is right Carl's already given up a belt Carl's at the stage in his career where he understands he can give up belts and the people will demand that champions fight him right you don't think that the Jean Pascal entourage right now isn't acutely aware of the fact that their man when he was unbeaten lost to Carl Froch you don't think if Carl Froch walked down the street in Canada right now by the Bell Center there wouldn't be different groups looking for revenge on Carl Froch the Pascal group the Lucien Boutte group Carl Froch understands that he has a title that transcends the belt right he's already worn multiple belts in his life right now Carl is simply having fights for legacy purposes don't get me wrong you're not gonna get Carl Froch to fight you unless you also are coming up with some money but Carl's more about legacy at this point so understand the person in the room who's saying no I'm not gonna fight Bernard Hopkins isn't his promoter who's seen a lot of green right if that fight takes place it's not the hometown press that would love to have Carl fight at home right he was raised in the neighborhood he's a big-time boxer now a fight in the neighborhood would generate a lot of jobs generate a lot of publicity generate a lot of attention right a lot of tourism no no the person in the room who's saying no I'm not gonna fight Bernard Hopkins is Carl Froch right Carl was running at the mouth a bit too much in an interview where he said I'll fight Bernard if he comes to my hometown understand Bernard Hopkins is the wrong guy to try to bluff in boxing right Bernard Hopkins is like Azuma Nelson used to be it's like what you're willing to give me a fight you tell me when you give me a map you give me the time you just pay me decently and I'll be there right Carl Froch wasn't expecting Hopkins to say okay you want me to fight you on your front lawn I'll be there right now that Bernard has said I'll be there Carl Froch is basically doing the math in his head that one Manuel Marquez has done in thinking about a further Manny Pacquiao fight 
Just understand, though, that as Carl does the math, there's someone in his thoughts, and that's Joe Kalzaki. I think Carl has fought so far to be put on the same pedestal as Joe Kalzaki. Right? He understands that from the standpoint of the Joe Kalzaki legacy, fighting Bernard Hopkins doesn't help him. If he beats Bernard, people are going to say, hey, you beat a Bernard who wasn't as young, as fresh, or as good as the Hopkins who beat, excuse me, who lost to Joe Kalzaki. Right? Some other people will say, whoa, whoa, isn't this really a problem for you? Joe Calzaghe beat Hopkins in the United States. Right? You had to have Hopkins in your backyard to win. In other words, if the fight's close, if it's controversial, if it's like Frotch's fight against Andre Durrell, which took place in Nottingham, people are going to say, hey, man, you won the fight, but did you really win the fight? And... Even if you won the fight, you didn't win it like Joe Calzaghe. Right? And, of course, if Carl comes in and blows out Bernard Hopkins, then people are going to say, whoa, whoa, which Hopkins did you fight? The Hopkins coming off a loss against Sergei Kovalev? That's not the Hopkins Calzaghe fought. So just figure out Carl's motivation. Right? Let's just say... You know, while I'm always up to see great fights, right, I understand Carl's reluctance here, right? You know, Carl should just openly admit, hey, I was running off at the mouth. No, I'm not going to fight Bernard Hopkins. Um, I'm looking at, you know, Jean Pascal, Boutte, whoever. Finally, let me talk about a fighter who's not in the press enough, right? Brandon Rios really looks spectacular against Mike Alvarado. You know, really, that's on the very short list of performances of the year so far for 2015. He looks great, right? The storyline coming out of that fight was that Alvarado had problems, etc. Please, do me a favor. Look at the actual fight itself. Don't buy this, you know, Alvarado had problems thing. Look at the fight itself. You're going to see prime Rios. You're going to see Rios looking great. Now, would it surprise you to learn that Brandon Rios has never been knocked out in a fight? Never. Now, you have other guys in boxing running off at the mouth, right? Somehow, right, uh, Amir Khan and Kell Brook can't get together, right? Go figure. That would be a automatic box office bonanza, right? Amir Khan is trying to get a fight with Floyd Mayweather. Okay, that's fair enough. He might not be able to. Now, let me say this. Based on styles, you want to know a great fight right now? A fight that would have fireworks? A fight that would be dangerous for both fighters? How about Brandon Rios? Right? Pressure fighter, front foot heavy, action-packed guy, fighting Amir Khan. A guy who has had problems keeping a guy outside. Right? I think that's an interesting fight. Keep in mind, Timothy Bradley got inside on Devin Alexander, and you got the feeling Alexander wasn't as comfortable inside as he could have been. Right? Alexander's not a guy who likes to get right up on you. That's who Amir Khan just beat. What about Amir Khan against the guy who likes to get right up on you? Right? Then I think it gets complicated, doesn't it? We know Rios is going to bring aggression into the ring. Now, I'll agree certain fighters, Richard Abril, I would encourage you to look at the film of Abril against Brandon Rios. Floyd Mayweather. I believe certain fighters would feast on Brandon Rios because they'd have Brandon Rios walk into an arm or a shoulder and these guys are built to handle that kind of pressure right um, is Amir Khan I think it's an open question 
I still remember Amir Khan hitting the canvas against Julio Diaz, a fight people seem to have forgotten. Right? Well, Robert Garcia, Rios' trainer now, is talking about the possibility of taking on Miguel Cotto. Wouldn't that be a great fight? Think about it. I know the first Margarito fight is shrouded in controversy because of, you know, uh, tainted gloves in a later Margarito fight. Right? Okay, fair enough. The concern's real. Tainted gloves can change the dynamic of a fight, definitely. Right? But I'll say this. That first fight, Margarito is on his front foot hunting down Miguel Cotto, and there comes a time in that fight where Cotto starts taking knees. Right? Understand, Sergio Martinez is a bit different. Martinez is hard to find in the ring, hides his upper body. That's not Brandon Rios' game. Brandon Rios is going to say, hey, here I am, Miguel. My body's right here. I'm right here. You know, I'm here ready to trade, right? Understand, with Freddie Roach, Miguel Cotto has been able to move all around the ring, hasn't he? What happens if he's in it with a front foot heavy guy who's going to try to corner him, who's going to follow him around the ring? I think style-wise, that's a fascinating fight. Keep in mind, too, Cotto just got to middleweight. Right? Don't view Cotto like you view some of the big middleweights, like, let's say, a Peter Quillen. Cotto just got the middleweight. So it seems that there's bargaining room there to negotiate some fight. You know I hate catchweights. The point simply is this. Miguel Cotto's not big for a middleweight. So there seems to be, to me, if, if I'm the Rio crowd, there seems to be a chance here to take on a middleweight champion. Right, Have Rios come up in weight a little bit and take on a middleweight champion. Rios doesn't have to weigh middleweight himself. Understand, the weight limit's just the limit. You can come in several pounds lighter. Look at the weight Floyd Mayweather came in when he fought for the 154 title against Oscar De La Hoya. Right? There's nothing that says Rios can't come in weighing 153 or 154 to fight Cotto for Cotto's title at middleweight. Right? They could even say, if the sanctioning body refuses to sanction it, and I understand the argument, a sanctioning body is going to say, whoa, whoa, wait a moment, this guy's not even a middleweight. You want us to sanction a title fight? Right? If the sanctioning body won't sanction it, have it be an exhibition. Right? The point is simply this. Style-wise, that's a great fight. Cotto might even go for an exhibition, because an exhibition would mean that he could lose the fight and still keep his title. Then we'd get the real fight for the title. So, what I want people to consider is, since Rios is unique, great chin, right? Great chin. He's going to challenge guys. Guys with back foot games, Rios can actually try to hunt you down. I'd even be fascinated by Rios against Hassan and Jikum, quite frankly. Right? If you want to see a fighter <coughs> who might have a problem dealing with a guy who gets close to him, I think you want to consider Brandon Rios as a possible opponent, just like I believe you need to consider Timothy Bradley as a possible opponent. Styles make fights. Let's have some matches that involve clashing styles. I think Rios Amir Khan, I think Rios Cotto, I think those are great fights. I think they'd be action-packed. Anyway, I'm almost at 35 minutes here. Let me thank you for stopping by. Hope you leave your comments on any of the topics we've discussed here in the comment section to this video. If you feel that Deontay Wilder should sign up to fight Klitschko in his next fight, assuming Klitschko gets by Brian Jennings, and for me that's not a foregone conclusion, if you feel David Price shouldn't have fought Vladimir Klitschko, and it's actually better 
having taken tough matches against people like Tony Thompson. Right? If you feel that Carl Frotz should fight Bernard Hopkins in Nottingham, I think that'd be a great fight, by the way. Right? If you feel Carl Frotch's decision has nothing to do with Joe Calzaghe, then I'd like to hear from you. And, of course, as fight fans do, let's come up with great fights. Let's talk about possible great fights so the people in power in boxing can think to themselves, hey, you know what? That would be a great fight. Rios? Amir Khan? Mm, Rios? Cotto? Let's talk about it. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.